Um, Brian, someone criticized the current Board of Selectmen's ability to get along with one another. Uh, do you think you'd be able to unite people around a common goal? Absolutely. Before I answer that, I do want to thank the Hampton Union and the moderator Kazaza for hosting this meeting tonight. Uh, I have a record of accomplishment in this community for over 30 years. I think part of unity goes beyond just getting along and working together. I think it involves being around a collective group of goals. And when you sit as a Board of Selectmen member, you're managing the prudential affairs of the community. And so continuity and unity really go one and one. I don't think it's necessary that every member socializes with each other or does stuff outside of board meetings. I do think the more you communicate with one another and be up front with each other certainly goes a long way. But I think every board has been different. The nine years I sat on this board of selectmen, every single year we had a different group or a different sort of uh, unique group of people that were involved. But I was able to work with all of them and I was able to work with all the boards in town that I interface with. And I think that's the keen ability, unique ability I bring to the table is my leadership ability to do that. So I look forward to doing that again. Thank you. Question for everyone, and this could be a yes and a no. Um, what is your position on the petition warrant article which calls for the town to stop picking up commercial trash? Mr. Warburton. I uh, concur on that as well. Mr. So, um, the, the newcomers, so n not Mr. Pearson, not Mr. Nichols. Um, antagonism, no civility, a lack of respect, those are the words that Ben Moore used to describe the tenor of the board of selectmen when he resigned from the board in June. Um, do, do you believe that that's accurate? Am I a newcomer? <laughs> <laughs> For this group. <laughs> the, uh, I'll answer it this way, and I'm going to go back, Nick, to what I said in my earlier statement. When you're put in a position being on any board, I don't care if it's a selectman or school board or state representative, whatever, you don't know what issues are going to come before you. Some of the issues through the time I was on got very heated and deservedly so. You had very strong opinions on many things. Uh, civility, I can tell you, is absolutely the, uh, the, the way things should be on boards. You would hope that it would be 100% of the time. Um, and the issue you referred to, Mr. Moore, um, is unfortunate. However, I, let me remind people that resignations from boards is not anything new in this town or any other community. Mr. Moore chose to do that for whatever reason. <coughs> but I certainly would work, uh, knowing the folks I'd be working with once elected, to do the very best I can to conduct myself and work with others in a way that's going to put things forward. The one more thing I'll add is, even through turbulent times from 1995 to 2004, we accomplished a lot in this community. And some of the meetings were very uh, tough. So. You can have both. It's not easy, but it involves thick skin and hard work. Thank you, Mr. Uh, for the newcomers first, um, do, you <laughs> do you agree with the priorities the board has displayed over the past year? If not, where would you have focused your energy? Well, that's an excellent question. Um, I think Dick Nichols has done an excellent job in drilling down on the community and what we absolutely need. Um, it's not easy to answer a question unless you've sat at those boards through the years. Every year priorities are different. Just like master plan. Master plan is what's going on at any given time. People will tell you it's years from now. Well, it's the thought process that's going on at that time. The priorities of this current board certainly have been for the future, which uh, makes me feel good. Because everything I've ever done in my years of running for office has always been about the future and my record of accomplishment speaks for itself. The, the priority set by any board certainly has all the things we've talked about, Eileen talked about it earlier and others, with tax rates and with, with um, what do you do in a capital improvements plan and putting one project ahead of another. That's never going to change. So I applaud this group. They were, they're handed things at a certain amount of a period in time. If I get, off the get on the board, some of the priorities could change over the ensuing years. So I really think it's a matter of what comes before you and, and goes back to the consensus building, which I was able to do many years ago when I was a selectman to get things done. So, 
Give us brief answers. And I just, uh, the Massachusetts U.S. Senators and six of its 11 U.S. Representatives uh, recently sent a letter to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission recommending that basically that the license um, for a Seabrook station not be renewed into um, they deal with their concrete degradation problem. Is this an issue that Hampton should get involved in? Yeah, I have no problem at any time of paying attention to any issue like that, but unfortunately I haven't been involved to that extent. I think we're more interested, as Mr. Nichols pointed out, with the assessment issue that's going on with uh, the nuclear power plant as we speak, but certainly we'd want to look at that. Good question. Uh, yeah. Now that the old courthouse and old town hall has been torn down, uh, what would you like to see that land used for? This uh, discussion of needs for that area, you'd have several town groups vying, believe me, for different things they'd like to see there. Certainly a community center, as Joe alluded to, be one of them. We've got pressing issues, though, as some of my colleagues have said here tonight, as far as the road improvements, everything else. So I think we really need to look at other areas until we decide as a community what we want to do for that space. Um, would you support a ballot initiative to allow bars in Hampton to push back last call from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m.? Yeah, I would absolutely not be in favor of seeing extended and having been involved with uh, working in the beach area for several years and certainly in the town as a whole and talking to other communities. Um, there's a trend now really changing in, in cities and towns with people that aren't staying out as late, believe it or not. And I think that that's not a, that's a non-issue for most restaurants and bars you talk to now. And I would absolutely just leave it a, the way it is now um, and, and not do anything with it. So I'm going to ask each of the candidates to, if they, if they would like, um, give us some closing remarks, a minute or two, uh, about why they're running, why they would like to be elected um, as, a, uh, as a selectman to the Board of Selectmen. As I did in mid-September of 1996, to the folks in the audience here and to the viewers at home, we welcomed Channel 22 live for the first time. I was very proud to be part of that almost 18 years ago. I was part of that group that started what we called the Great Communication. And it's really made a difference in this community for all the projects. Then we went to the school board and planning board and elsewhere. Mr. Moderator, my colleagues here, those in the audience and at watching at home and watching the repeat of this meeting, the conversation I end with tonight really talks more about where I come from and why I believe I should be returned back as one of the two selectmen for three-year seats. I have a wife who's been a teacher at the academy. She's in her 31st year. My wife, Kim. My two daughters grew up, went through the school system here, graduated, one from UNH, one is in Northern Essex, Colleen and Katie. The important thing to remember about that, when I first got elected in 1995, my kids were four and two. I was able to do it all. Rusty alluded to earlier about working with other boards, absolutely right. When you talk about being put in a situation where you want to work with other boards in doing a consensus building to get projects done, putting center school addition ahead of Route 1 one year. There's a whole litany of things that I was able to accomplish. And I want to mention one more thing because Nick and Patrick brought up something very interesting tonight. And I think for the first time in public I can say this in a proud way. You know, back when I was on the board nine years, I had some very immature moments. I got a lot done in working with the Board of Select and other boards. But my behavior at times was unwelcome. And somebody said to me the other day, after 10 years away, with the knowledge I have, with the job I've done at state parks, and being a person who is a leader and is a communicator and has all the total package, come back a step, gain that maturity, and be willing to work with others. And I've got to tell you, it's hard for somebody like myself to say that, but I'm, I'm willing to say that because I want to get back in the game. I think I've made a difference in working with lots of people in this town, and you all know me. And I love what I do. I love what I did. I hope I can continue to be a voice. I have a lot of knowledge, both in town and state government. I think I could bring that voice again in a mature manner and certainly with the same decisive and communicative manner that I've been capable of in the past. I urge you to vote for Brian Warburton on March 11th from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at Winnicott High School. Thank you.